What do you want? Mrs. Connors, may I please see Mr. Connors for just a minute? He's upstairs dressing. He's got to meet a train. Please, Mrs. Connors, it's terribly important. Well, I'll see if he's nearly ready. That Julia Norman's at the door to see you. Julia Norman? Jeff Norman's daughter? What does she want? I don't know. She didn't say. Julia. What is it? What's the matter? It's father. He's down at McCurdy's. Oh. Wait a minute. I'll get my hat and coat. So it's that old Soak again. He's a regular disgrace to this town. He's probably the most brilliant lawyer Jericho ever had. When he's sober, maybe. I thought it was so important for you to meet that fine friend of yours, Tucker Wedge, and that woman he married. Well, I'll do both. 620's never on time. Well, we'll have to hurry. You'd better wait here. Cheese it. What do you want? Jeff Norman. Who said he was here? That's unimportant. Where is he? You got a search warrant? No. You ain't gonna search my place, even if you are a county attorney. Unless you got a search warrant. Either you tell Jeff Norman I want to see him, or warrant or no warrant, I'm going in. Don't take nothing off him, Gutch. If he gets smart, bust him one. Gotch, make up your mind. I've got to meet a train. <laughs> All right, go on in and get him. You don't take no hair off of my scalp. I was just testing you, Mr. Connors. Thanks. <laughs> Norman. Uh, 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 come on, Mr. Norman, come on. Ah. Uh, uh, name Connors, isn't it? That's right. Well, very good of you. Very good indeed. <laughs> I don't desire to leave just now. <laughs> Shut up. He got you plumb back down, ain't he? <laughs> I'm warning you, shut up. You plumb scared to death. <laughs> I suppose I'd better. I don't let nobody laugh at me. I get it. I don't desire to keep her waiting. She's a good girl, David. That's right. Uh, a good girl. You got a gun, she's got a crowbar!
God, you better have somebody call for an ambulance right away. And don't let anybody touch him till Dr. Patterson gets here. Let's go, Mr. Nolan. Hello. Hello. Central, get me Dr. Patterson at the hospital right away. It's an emergency. Well, here it comes, snorting like an old bull. Hello there. Ah, Connors, again we meet. Are you folks taking this train? In all the excitement, I expect that Julia neglected to tell you that she and I are leaving Jericho. Oh, not for good, I hope. Yes. As it happens, a distant cousin of mine in Delaware, of whose existence I must confess I have little knowledge, has died and left her estate to us. You might say that I was in a manner uh, celebrating that unlooked for event when Julia asked you to, uh, to seek me out this afternoon. I'm sorry to see you go. I'll miss you. Thank you. And we shall miss you too, both of us. You're a fine man, Connors, and a fine lawyer. Thank you, sir. You'll go far, even in Kansas. Come, Julia. Goodbye, Mr. Connors. And thank you again for everything. Goodbye, dear. Oh, Jim, uh, those five pieces over there. Hey, sure thing, Mr. Ray. Hi, babe! Hi, Jerry, old son of a gun. <laughs> How are you? I told Algeria we'd find that face of yours right here on the platform. <laughs> so you're Dave Collins. Well, honestly, Tucker has talked of no one else. As far as I know, Jericho consists of one person, David Connors. <laughs> well, come on, Dave, say something. What do you think of her? Well, I think she's going to be quite a revelation to Jericho. Oh. You sure took us all by surprise. Say, I was almost a surprise myself. Oh, poor darling. He didn't have a thought in his mind of marrying until I deliberately enticed him. Well, of course, we knew each other before, sort of casual. Uh -huh. Then one evening, we found ourselves in each other's arms. There you have it. That's the way it usually happens, isn't it? It was so nice of you to meet us. I, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Say, by the way, how's the clarion been doing without me? Still covering cancers like the dust. Oh, don't <laughs> tell him, Dave. All he thinks about is that newspaper of his. Well, why not? After all, it's our meat and potatoes, Mrs. Wade. The Apex House, Jim. Yes, sir, Mr. Webb. Thanks an awful lot for meeting us. Good see you tomorrow at the office. Good to see you. Good night. Good night. It's about time you got here. You know women. Oh, Tucker thinks that all a woman has to do is slip into a dress when she's ready. Algeria, I'd like you to meet my wife, Belle. How do you do, Mrs. Collins? It was so sweet of you to ask us. Well, Dave wanted... I mean, uh, I've been wanting to meet you. Hello, Belle. Hello, Tucker. Uh, can I take your, your hat and things? Oh, Tucker? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Just put your head over here and come on in. You know everybody. Sure. Hello, dear. It's good to see you again. My, what a beautiful hat. Oh, do you like it? I'm so glad. Oh, that's all right. I'll just put it here. You know, Tucker and I were married in such a hurry, I didn't have time to do any shopping. I'll just leave these with my hat, if I may. Oh, I'll take them. I'll... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, shall we go in? Well, yes, let's. It's hard to predict the outcome, Dave. You see... Oh, excuse me. Oh, certainly. Well, will you introduce Algeria to our guests? Oh, Dave, I'd, I'd rather you did it. I, I get so mixed up with me. Oh, of course, dear. Algeria, uh, I'd like you to meet Belle's mother, Mrs. Dunham. How do you do, Mrs. Dunham? Oh, don't get up, please. Oh, that's all right. I'm not sick. It's so nice meeting you. Much obliged. Now, come on over here and meet Mrs. Hutto. How do you do, Mrs. Hutto? How do you do, Mrs. Wedge? And this is Judge Hutto. I'm delighted to meet you at last, Judge Hutto. Tucker has done nothing but quote you. Accurately, I hope. Oh, well, after all, he's a newspaper man. You can't expect too much. <laughs> That's right. That's quite right. <laughs> I believe you already know this fellow. Oh, yes, slightly. Hello, darling. In spite of what you just said about me. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, that was very nice. I enjoyed it. Now, this is Mrs. Ransom. Mrs. Ransom. How do you do? Her daughter, Margie. Hello, Margie. Hello, Mrs. Ransom. Now, this is Tom Ransom. Runs the best dry goods store west of Topeka. How are you, sir? Good evening, ma'am. May I offer my best wishes and hope that you and Tucker will be very happy. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. I'm sure we will be. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Well, I'll sit here for me. Oh, that's a beautiful piano. Do you play, Mrs. Collins? Uh, no, it, uh, it came with the house. Oh, neither do I. It's one of the regrets of my life. But Tucker, the darling, has promised to send to Chicago to get me a player piano. It's probably the only instrument I'll ever be able to play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is supper ready? Uh, I don't know. Ask Nellie. Nellie? Who's Nellie? The maid. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. Oh, uh, Nellie. You ready for us to come in yet? Just as soon as I get another plate of soup. But this one's cracked and it's for her. Oh. Well, you might as well come in, everybody. She'll be ready by the time we are. Oh, I hope you won't mind just a country supper at a country lawyer's. We're pretty informal around here. No regular servants. Oh, of course not. I'm flattered to be included. Now, we don't have to worry with Belle and her mother cooking the way they do. Well, I thought it was very nice. Oh, over here, please. Don't you? Shine on, shine on, harvest moon. But in the sky, I ain't had no love and sin. January, February, June, July. Snow time, ain't no time to stay. But night's I suppose you find Jericho pretty dull. Oh, on the contrary, I find Jericho very diverting. Well, a lot of people think it's ugly and backward. But you don't. You love it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe... Maybe because of nights like this. Kansas nights. Look, there's Venus, the bright one. sometime. You know, I, I never did like this picture. You were right, Tucker. Dave's everything you said he was. But those dreadful women. Ooh, they are pretty awful, aren't they? Whatever possessed him to marry such a creature? Why does any man ever marry any woman? Tucker! Well, except you, of course. Oh, you. Well... <laughs> I suppose she used to be pretty. Very. And living there in her mother's boarding house, naturally they were thrown together. The old lady saw to that. And I suppose the main trouble is that she just hasn't been able to grow up with Dave. I suppose. And that's why she drinks. Drinks? Don't tell me you didn't know. Well, of course, there's been a lot of talk, but... I knew it the minute I saw her. You can always tell. That sort of guilty, resentful look. Why doesn't he leave her? Search me. You know, Dave's a strange fellow. Well, perhaps he feels a sort of responsibility for her. Well, you don't go on living with somebody forever just because you feel sorry for them. Yeah, but that's pretty serious business in this neck of the woods. Remember, this is Kansas, and eh? Dave's in politics. Well, seems such an awful shame and waste. Well, that's his cross, not ours. Good evening. Oh, Jerry, how nice to meet you. Well, Tucker, how are you? So just beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Would you like to join the people? I'd love to. 
How are things down at the office? Fine, Morris. I think, do you know Dr. Fritz? Herbert? Uh, one of my favorite people. Why, well, sure. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, Mr. Wedge. Good evening. They told me to give you that. Thank you. You're welcome. Gee, some party ate it. Everybody here yet? Well, your friend Dave Connors just turned us down. At the last minute, too. Oh, that's too bad. What excuse did he give? None. Well, except that he had to go to a meeting. If it doesn't last too long, I'll drop by. Meeting nothing. It was that wife of his. Well, I guess she does kind of put a crimp in his social life. Still, on the other hand, it might be true. He could be going to a meeting. What kind of meeting? Well, some farmer's meeting, probably. Well, after all, he's in politics. And the way things look now wouldn't surprise me if a couple of years from now he runs for Congress. Congress? Mm -hmm. Dave Congress? And he went to by a mile. Dave's a born vote getter. He's already got the farmers eating out of his hand. His only trouble will be in getting the party behind him. Ah, there they are. Hello, Mary. Good evening. Hello, Joe. Uh, I'm worried about you. Well, I'm sorry oh, for letting you have It's perfectly all right. Honey, Thank you. you remember Joe Wilson, don't you? Oh, I should say I do. Oh, Good evening. Yes, 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 Thank you. Yes, Shall we go in? What a lovely home you have. It's very simple, actually. All you have to do is just flip these two little keys. Oh, I've never seen one you didn't have to pump. <laughs> it is the very newest thing. If I'd known they were going to make pianos like this, I certainly would never have taken lessons. <laughs> You're a great success, darling. You know, Jericho hasn't seen anything like this since William Jennings Bryan ate supper here. Well, I still think it was rude of Dave to wait until the last minute to refuse. And I'm going to tell him so to his face. Well, now's your chance. Hello, Dave. Hello. Well, the meeting was over sooner than I expected. Am I still welcome? That depends on how well you dance. <laughs> Too. I'll tell you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tucker tells me you're thinking of running for Congress. Oh, well, it's a long way off. A couple of years at least. A lot of things can happen in the meanwhile. You must drop by sometime and tell me about it. Thanks, I will. When? Well, I, I don't know exactly. I'll have to... Tomorrow? Well, I'm afraid I have to go to Topeka tomorrow. Well, then we'll make it when you get back. <laughs> well, I had no idea you were interested in politics. Beautiful woman. Oh, but I am. Definitely. Oh, there you are. What are you up to? Oh, nothing. Just having some punch. And talking politics. Hmm? Politics? Algeria invited me to drop in sometime and tell her about my plans for Congress. Algeria? Interested in politics? Oh, you'd think so if you'd heard her trying to pin me down as to when I'd drop by. <laughs> In fact, she sounds like a campaign manager. Well, leave it to women. They always have to find something new to be interested in. <laughs> oh, come on, honey. Uh, this is the last dance. Hmm? Sorry, Mr. County Attorney, but this one is reserved strictly for husbands. Oh, Martha, never mind about that tonight. You may tidy up in the morning. Thank you, Mrs. Wedge. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Wedge. Good night, Martha. I'll get the lights. Oh, tired? <laughs> A little. No wonder all those people. Oh, it isn't that. I thought some of them were very nice. Tucker. Hmm? I've been thinking about Dave Connors and Congress. Doesn't that disturb you? Oh, I know. I figure Dave's just about as good a man oh, as... Oh, I know, but... Well, just imagine that awful wife of his in Washington. Of course, I can understand how she'd like that. I guess any woman would like to see her husband in Congress, but, but Belle Connors? Why, everybody in town knows she's drunk from morning till night. 
Well, how do you know that some other wives in Washington don't take a nip now and then? <laughs> it's no laughing matter, Tucker. It's tragic. Oh, darling, I know how you feel about Dave and how loyal you are to him. But there's some things you just have to put above friendship. Yes, but if the clarion doesn't support Dave, well, how'll I ever explain it? Well, there doesn't have to be anything personal in it. After all, a newspaper has its responsibilities. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, dear. I didn't mean to upset you. I know that you think that Dave is the most wonderful man in the world. But it just so happens that I think you are. And I wouldn't want to see you do anything that wasn't right, ever. Well, compliments from you? What brought that on? Well, I... I'm afraid you'll probably laugh at me, but... Sometimes I... I just can't help feeling jealous of Dave. Maybe that's because I'm just not big enough to want to share you with anybody. Maybe that'll show you how much cause you have to be jealous of anybody or anything. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> People are kind of shut mouth on that subject. Say, Mr. Connors, you've been reading the Clarion lately? Well, everybody in Jericho reads the Clarion Gotch. Very fine paper. And what's all this talk about a vice campaign? You better ask Tucker Wade. He seems to be the authority on the subject. Ah, Tucker's loony. Everybody knows there ain't no vice in Jericho to speak of. And I reckon it's me they really mean. But I ain't no big bootlegger, Mr. Connors. I ain't running no blind tiger. I'll give you my word. Well, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Blow it come out in the wash. Looks like I owe the barber in here a quarter. <laughs> Howdy, Judge. Good evening, Dave. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you, Sam? Howdy, How are you, Henry? Good evening, Mr. Connors. How do I stand, Joe? All right, next. <laughs> as soon as I get through slicking Sam here, I'm pretty for church tomorrow. Never mind how pretty I look. Just be sure to stop the bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. Hey, you must not have been in here lately. <laughs> How's the game going? Oh, he's learning. <laughs> Still haven't announced, huh? Ah, uh, too early, Judge. I want to wait and see what some other people are going to do first. Then you're crazy. The thing to do is jump in quick, beat everybody else to the gun. Well, all I can say is you better get the clarion off your neck. Oh, Judge, you are going on a liquor raid? That's pretty sure fire politics in Kansas. <laughs> Joe, you got any suggestions where I ought to start? Not at my house. Mine neither. <laughs> Besides, Judge, everybody knows as well as you do, there's no bootleg ring in Jericho. Maybe Gotch McCurdy has a few bottles hidden away, and if I catch him with them, I'll ring his tail. But this business of snooping into people's homes just to get on the front page, not for me. Thanks, Tom. The trouble is, when a newspaper keeps yelling its head off day after day about the same thing, a lot of people are liable to begin believing it. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've got a new lawyer coming in my office who'd like to meet you. Okay, send him over. It's not a him, it's a her. What? You mean you've gone and hired yourself a she-lawyer? Sight of a pretty woman around the office is not such a bad idea, young man. Especially when you haven't got any more time left to enjoy them than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Bell? Bell, it's after four. We better get started. Hey, 
Bell. Bell, you all right? Oh, Bell, you promised. taking good care of you. If he is, let me know. Good afternoon, Miss Lawrence, Miss Shelley. David Connors. Hello. How are you, David? Nice to see you. Glad to see you. Hello, Jim. Dave. Well, hello, Dave. My, we've been missing you. Hello, Algeria. Oh, you know, everybody's so rushed these days, but as soon as things settle down a bit, we must see more of each other. After all, old friends are best friends. Tucker, Dave is here. Hello, Tucker. How are you, Dave? Oh, uh, Dave. Dave, do come along. I want you to meet Porter. <laughs> Senator Grimes, this is Mr. David Connors, our county attorney. Why, yes, of course. I've heard about you, Connors. I'm delighted to meet you. Thank you, Senator. You know, I once had ambitions to be a county attorney myself. Yes, sir, I always take off my hat to the county attorney. Nearly always chief repository for the legal knowledge in his community. Has to be. It's for stunning whether he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Tucker and Dave are such old friends. I'm sure we can depend upon him to support the ticket. Can't we, Dave? Depends on who runs on the ticket. Oh, haven't you heard? Why, Porter's persuaded Tucker to run for Congress. Congratulations. Thank you, Dave. Now, if, if you'll all excuse me, please. Oh, hello. Oh, uh, come on over, Dave. Here's someone else who wants to meet you. But I already know Mr. Collins. Julia. <laughs> Julia Norman. Why, I, I can't believe it. I'll have you know I came to see you three or four days ago. But I gather you can't be bothered with she lawyers. You're the she... <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, what am I supposed to say? Nothing. I think women lawyers are frightful, too. Your father, he's well, I hope. Father died just after we left here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. How could you? I hope you don't mind my saying so, but a real miracle has happened to you. In what way? Oh, in, in many ways. I haven't changed, really. It's just that, like Topsy, I just grow. <laughs> Are you really going to practice here? Only in Judge Hutto's office. I, uh, I doubt if the time has come for a woman to appear in the courtroom. Well, why not? Customs of the race. What led you to do it? Guilt complex, I expect. You see, I was supposed to be a boy. <laughs> and when I wasn't, well, Dad had to do the best he could with what he had. He began teaching me when I was ten. And then, after he died, I went to law school in the East. Got through my bar examinations only last month. I wrote Judge Hutto. He gave me a job. And here I am. 
You're certainly the prettiest lawyer in the country. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to run. Mm. Trying to kill two birds with one stone. I have another party out in the country. Voters? Mm, potential. May I go with you? Well, it's quite a long ride. It'll give me a chance to catch up on things since I left Jericho. Hmm. Well, then I suppose we should say goodbye to our hostess. Now, shaking hands. Oh, good. Oh, good. oh, I'm afraid that's rather impractical. It looks as if Algeria is going to be awfully busy for a while. Now, OK, Senator. Nice big smile. Some of those young bucks have their turn with you. Arriving at the Blue Lion, Muggleton. Oh, if he went so crazy, I'd go in and buy him right now. What would you do with him? How should I know? Every woman wants something sometime that has no use at all. Just frivolous and funny and useless. <laughs> you going home? Mm-hmm. I'll drive you. Oh, isn't it out of your way? Miles. Well, then, I accept. <laughs> <laughs> You made up your mind about Congress yet? I don't know. What do you think? Well, if you're interested in a career, I... Well, that's just it. I'm not sure it's worth giving up my whole life for. And that's what it would mean if I were elected. Besides, there's something I haven't proved to myself yet. Whether I can be successful in general practice. Oh, how ridiculous. Why, everyone knows you just use your office to build up a scaly, slinking criminal practice. <laughs> You've been reading Tucker Wedge's editorials again, huh? Judge Hutto says they must be pretty scared the way they're going after you, horse, hoop, and artillery. You're, uh, you're not hesitating because you and Tucker used to be friends, are you? Oh, no. That would make me all the more anxious to beat him. Then I'd do it. Maybe I will. Well, hello there. Hello, hello Algeria. Algeria. Oh, you haven't by any chance seen Tucker around, have you? Uh -uh. I promised to pick him up, and I'm always late. He's going to be furious, poor darling. I suppose you know there's your real opponent. Hmm. I wonder why she dislikes me so much. I doubt if she does dislike you. As a matter of fact, I have an idea that's the trouble. She likes you more than she should. Now, wait a minute. And since she can't have you, she's going to make what she does have better than you. That's why she can be so deadly. She's going to elect Tucker or else. Huh. Say, that must have been some law school you went to, young lady. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I should bow to custom by saying that my decision to run for Congress was brought about by an overwhelming demand on the part of the public. But everyone would know that 
That is the old malarkey. Malarkey? That's a new one. Now make it applesauce. I am running for Congress simply because I would like very much to be a congressman. And because... Uh, hold it there, I'll finish it later. Good morning. What can I do for you? Well, uh, you had a little figurine of Mr. Pickwick in the window yesterday. Yes, we did have, but I sold it not an hour ago. But I have some other very nice pieces. Uh, let me see. How about, uh, High Walter? Oh, no. Thank you. Now, that'll be all. Too bad about Judge Hutto, isn't it? What about Judge Hutto? Oh, didn't you know? He just died. My wife happened to be passing there and telephoned me. Oh, no, I didn't know. Wonderful old gentleman. But then, as I'll always say, we all have to go sometime. I telephoned your office, but you were out. How did it happen? He just leaned back in his chair. It was gone. felt about it. If there's anything I can do for you. Don't worry about me. I've lived a long time and I've learned one thing. To accept whatever life has to offer. You're so good to me, David. She's asked me to take charge of things. And incidentally, she'd like you to be one of the pallbearers. Well, I'd be honored. I just dropped by to see if there was anything I could do. Mrs. Hutto hasn't been seeing anyone since the funeral. Oh, I see. Well, good night. Dave. from here, please. Anywhere, I don't care. For a little while. All right, come. We'll go for a drive. What are we going to do, Dave? I mean, how are we going to deal with it? Why should it be dealt with in any way, except the way we want? Because it's utterly wrong. You know that. So do I. Things like this have happened to other people before. And turned out all right. I've never known anything like this to turn out right yet. But I love you, Julia. I know now that I've never loved anyone else. I'd only make you miserable. In all my life, I've only wanted one thing. To make you happy. I've been in love with you for as long as I can remember. And when I was a child, I used to come and see my father. I used to watch you then. So kind, so sure, so 
so you say. You never knew it. I used to walk blocks out of my way. Just hoping I'd catch a glimpse of it. And Julia. Why shouldn't I tell you now? You've always been the center of my life. I guess that, more than anything else, is why I came back to Jericho. That'll be all, Dora. You may go and draw the shades in the living room. Algeria. Guess what? What? Dave Connors is not going to run. Not going to? Mm -mm. How do you know that? He just issued a statement. But what did he say? What excuse did he give? None, except that after uh, careful consideration, he finds it impossible to devote the necessary time and energy to the office. Oh, darn it. What's the matter? Well, I thought you'd be delighted. Well, I am, of course, but I would have rather beaten him at the polls, beaten him publicly. <laughs> you know, sweetheart, sometimes you're too deep for me. Here we are with Washington right on the horizon, and you act as if beating poor old Dave were a personal issue. Say, if you ask me, I think it was mighty sporting a Dave. To... Oh, Tucker, don't be foolish. Sportsmanship had nothing to do with it. He quit for a reason. I only knew what it was. Well, that's not so very important, is it? The point is... Of course is that... it's important. Anything like this must have something behind it. You don't suppose he... What? Oh, nothing. By the way, I saw that wife of his today. Sitting on the front porch, drunk as usual, I suppose, in the middle of the afternoon. Maybe that's it. Maybe he suddenly realized... Tucker, that... please don't scavenge. I can never keep a thing in the house when you're around. Oh, sorry. Has it ever occurred to you that an attractive man like Dave might... Well, might have found consolation somewhere else? Who? Dave? Oh, you're out of your mind. It has been done, you know. If you'd only told us. Why, Dave, why? Give us one sensible reason. You read my statement. We read a lot of words. You could have won. You know that. You still can win. No. If... All right, it's your decision. Oh, Tom. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to be rude. It's just that everybody's been at me all day. And, well, I don't want you to think, any of you, that I don't appreciate all you've done for me. That's all right. We understand. Thanks, Tom. Good night, Dave. Good night, Counselor. Good night, David. Good night, boy. Hello? Give me four seven. Uh, no, never mind. Cancel that. I've been reading the papers. Why did you do it? Well, I just... I couldn't afford to make the race at this time. Could you pick me up and drive me home? I've got to see you. Yes, my car's outside. I'm just leaving. I'll meet you there.
Hello, Margie. Hello, Julia. Hello, Mr. Connor. How are you, Margie? Oh, Julia, I took those books back to the library for you today. Oh, thank you, dear. Very That's much. all right. Over, Dave. Over. I'm leaving Jericho. Leaving? The firm of Grost and Strauss in Kansas City has offered me a job. The reason I called you is that Mrs. Hutto wants you to handle her affairs. I have all the papers here. Why, Julia? Why? You gave up the election because of me. Well, that's not the reason at all. It was just that... You do a lot of things well, David. Lying is not one of them. All right, I quit because I, I knew that if I ran for office... I couldn't see you anymore. Don't you realize, Dave, that all it could ever mean is a sordid backstreet love affair, and I don't want that. I'll ask Belle to free me. She'd never do that, and you know it. What, I love you, Julia. I know it's my fault. I had no business letting it start. You better hurry. There isn't much time. I'm leaving tonight on the 11.40. Hello, Miss Norman. Mr. Connors. Hello, Margie. I, I hope you don't mind. Well, what is it, Margie? Well, it, it's just that... Well, is something wrong? Oh, no, no, I mean... Well, well, it's just that I felt I had to tell you that somebody's been going by half a dozen times watching you. I, I mean, the house and... Well, what do you mean, watching? Here. Mrs. Wedge. Algeria. I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, that's all right, Margie, and thank you. Well, I guess I better go now. I hope I didn't... Oh, not at all, Margie. It was very kind of you. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Any other questions about the papers? Perhaps Mrs. Hutto can help you. Julia. Please, let's hurry.
guess this means she'll be back here soon. Who? Algeria Wedge. What's she done now? It's not her this time, it's him. According to the paper, looks as if he's going to run for senator. Maybe we'll have something to say about that. <laughs> we could have been there in Washington right now. If... Oh, oh. Well, we could. Well, then why aren't you? Because Dave lost his gumption and quit. But he won't quit next time. Well, it looks to me that she's there and you're not. Now, if you ask me... Nobody's asking you! How dare you talk to your own mother like that? I'll not spend another minute in this house to be insulted. Well, who's stopping you? I'm not. Belle, would you like to go for a walk? Where to? Hmm? Just a walk? No, thanks. I'll be back in a little while. Yes? Julia, this is Dave. David. May I come up? Second entrance to the right on the third floor. Dave. Julia. I, I was so surprised to hear your voice, I could hardly believe it. When did you arrive? Just an hour ago. Uh, may I? Won't you come in? Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. These apartments are all built in the same pattern. Living room, bedroom, bath, and kitchen. You have all that here. It's really very livable. I hate apartments. It's very pretty, the way you furnished it. I haven't spent much time on it. I've been very busy at the office. And you, what have you been doing? Oh, well, I, I'm not sure yet. There's been a lot of talk. I may run for the Senate. Oh, Dave. Tom Ransom, a lot of people have been after me. I've been making quite a few speeches. <laughs> but then, I always did. Oh, it sounds exciting. Tucker Wedge is going to run. Of course, I could always run as an independent. It might be fun to upset Algeria's little apple cart. So I'll try to. Yes. Yes, it might. Well, I guess I better be getting along. I, I'm 
I'm going back tonight on the 1020. It's been nice seeing you again, Julia. I'm glad you're doing so well. Thank you, Dave. And lots of luck. Oh, I, I almost forgot. I thought you might like to have this. Mr. Pickwick. Oh, Dave. You remembered. Julia. Lucy? You're not going someplace, are you? No, it's just, uh... Mrs. Landon, this is Mr. Connors. He's from Jericho. He's a lawyer. An old friend of my father's. Oh, really? How do you do, Mr. Connors? How do you do? My husband's a lawyer, too. He's in Julia's firm, you know. Oh, that's nice. Well, I suppose I'd better go. Yes, I expect so. Oh, if you're leaving, Mr. Connors, I'll just wait and drive home with Julia. I didn't tell my husband I was coming, so naturally he's not here to meet me. Oh, you haven't any other plans, have you, Julia? No. No, I have no other plans. Well, goodbye, Julia. Goodbye, Dave. Good night, Mrs. Landon. Good night, Mr. Connors. So nice seeing you. All aboard! What an attractive man. Is he married? Yes. Yes, he's married. Too bad. But then the attractive ones always are. Such a dreary trip. The dust was simply awful. Then to make things worse, we developed a flat wheel. It was worse than having a toothache. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to turn this meeting over to a man who has been closer to Dave Connors than any other man in Jericho. The man who has been chosen to serve as his campaign manager in this fight. I give you Tom Ramsey. <laughs> What is it called? A hobble skirt? No, it's a sheath gown. Oh, honestly, everybody in New York and Washington is wearing them. Do you really like it? I love it. I only wish I had the nerve and the figure to go with it. Of course, you realize it'll cause talk. After all, this is Jericho. Oh, dear. I come back here to help my husband campaign for the Senate, and I'm afraid I'm going to find myself the center of attention. Not through anything Tucker has done, but simply because I show an ankle. It's probably a good thing. Now it'll give people something else to gossip about besides the ransoms. The ransoms? What about the ransoms? Haven't you heard? No, what? Well, it seems they're not married, and they never have been. Tom and Myra Ransom? That's the story. Oh, I don't believe it. Who said so? Some people who used to know them back in Virginia let the cat out of the bag. They said everybody back there knew all about it. Well, when did you hear it? Only last night. Does Margie know? Of course. By now, everybody knows. Well, it only goes to prove that if you open enough closets, you're bound to find a skeleton somewhere. <laughs> well, shall we start? Oh, it's been ages since I've sat down to a whist table with you girls. <laughs>
Bobby doing? You keep away from me. You're that ransom girl, ain't you? to a girl if she's nice to me. But I can get mean, too, if I get mad. <laughs> found him just after midnight. He was dying when they brought him in. He wanted to say something, and we took this down, and he went into a coma. Will he recover his senses? Extremely doubtful. The corner of the shovel got him in the temple. He'll be gone in a couple of hours. And this, in effect, is a deathbed statement. I'll uh, have to turn it over to the police, Dave. That means the newspapers. I thought you might want to break it to Tom Ransom and his wife first. Mm. But you'll have to hurry. Thanks, Doctor. Give me half an hour. You and I know it couldn't have been the way McCurdy said, but we've got to find Margie to get the truth. Yes? What is it? Excuse me, I thought this might be important. Oh, excuse me. Is there any answer? Uh, no, no answer. Hello, Dave. Oh, Julia, I got your wire. Margie. to me, nobody knows. Oh, good. You've seen the papers, you know what's happened. Yes, I didn't mean to kill him. He was coming at me. I know, I know. Well, that's why you've got nothing to fear. But first you'll have to come back to Jericho and... Oh, no, no, I'll never. I hate that horrid place. But you'll have to, Margie, it's the only way. I couldn't. I'll die first. I'll just die. Now listen, Margie, you trust me, don't you? And Julia, you know we wouldn't ask you to do anything that wasn't right. Yes, but... He's right, darling. You must go now, of your own free will, before anyone knows where you are. Will you come with me, Julia? 
Yes, Margie, if you want me to. All right, I'll go. There's a train leaving in an hour. Get us there by morning. I wire your father to meet us. Dear, you put on that dress I laid out for you. Margie. be all right, won't she? I mean, no jury would ever convict her after she's had a chance to tell her story. Well, ordinarily, I'd say no, but we can't take a chance, Julia. You'll have to help me with this. She trusts you. You mean the trial? Yes. Oh, but I can't. I mean, I'd rather not. There's another reason, Julia. This may be the last time we can ever be together. Always the last time, David. We've said that before. I can't help loving you, Julia. You know that. Please, David. Yeah? What do you mean by waking me at this hour? Huh? Where? Oh, I see. Well, use your own judgment. You're in charge. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, goodbye. in the world was that? Yeah, city editor. Want to know whether to get out an extra or not. Well, of all things, waking us up in the middle of the night. What are you for? Margie Ransom's back. Good heavens, is that so important? Where'd they find her? Uh, they didn't. Came back of her own accord with Dave Connors and Julia Norman. Dave Connors and Julia Norman? Uh -huh. Julia is back here? Yeah, I'm going to assist Dave at the trial, according to his statement. But I thought... Hmm? Nothing. Go to sleep. Just picking themselves a jury. Well, it looks as though he's going to get her off. Hmm? I said it looks as though he's going to get her off. Who? Marjorie Ransom. Oh, sure. It looks that way. And everybody knows that girl couldn't commit murder. Oh, really, Trucker? You're the most naive person I've ever known. Naive? Well, just look at all the free advertising Dave's getting. And in your own paper, too. Well, Dave just happens to be lucky. He's got a good case, that's all. Uh -huh, and look what he's doing with it. He's got the whole county eating out of his hands. If you're not careful, he's likely to ride right in on the bandwagon. Well, what do you expect me to do? You can't go and convict a girl just to win an election. Well, no, of course not that. But it seems to me there ought to be something you could do to offset him. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You know, winning a murder case is not winning an election. Uh oh, say, I better get going. Well, goodbye, dear. Goodbye, Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye. The district court in and for the county of Jericho is now in session. Everybody rise.
seated. All right, Mr. Pettigrew, you may proceed. Your Honor, the state at this time wishes to continue the cross-examination of Marjorie Ransom. Marjorie Ransom, take the stand. Miss Ransom, you told us before recess that you went to the freight yard on the night in question, that Mr. McCurdy followed you, that he attempted to seize you, and in self-defense you swung the shovel. Yes, sir. Now, will you tell us what you were doing in the freight yard that time of night? Running away. Oh, yes. Running away. Running away from what? Well, I... Well, go on, tell us. Running away from what? I was... just running away. I see. And Mr. McCurdy urged you not to do that, didn't he? Oh, no, no, he... You were running away. You intended to let no one stop you. That's it, isn't it? No, I... That's the truth, isn't it? Admit it. Come on, tell me. Answer me truthfully. Your Honor, I suggest that counsel for the state give the witness time to answer the question. Answer the question, Miss Ransom. I withdraw the question for the moment, Your Honor. And now, Miss Ransom, will you tell the jury why, if, as you say, you were simply defending your honor, you didn't stay and report this occurrence? Well, I... I didn't realize I'd hit him so hard. Oh, come, Miss Ransom. All I want you to tell us is whether at that very moment you didn't know that McCurdy was dying and you were afraid to report it because you knew you were guilty of murder. Answer me. Do you realize what can happen to you if you don't tell us the truth? Your Honor, I must protest the prosecution's manner of questioning my client as abusive and threatening. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Ransom. I didn't realize your feelings were so tender. However, I must insist that you answer my questions. Did you run away because you knew you had killed him or didn't you? <coughs> That's all, Your Honor. All right, you're excused, Miss Ransom. Your Honor, the defense will now call Miss Julia Norman to the stand. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in this case? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help the God? I do. Take the stand. Your name? Julia Norman. Where do you live? Kansas City. Occupation? Attorney at law. You formerly lived in Jericho? Yes. How long have you known the defendant? Almost all of her life. Did you ever see Marjorie Ransom in Kansas City? I did. When? About six weeks ago. What did you discuss? Her plans to return to Jericho. Tell the court under what circumstances she returned. But when she learned that McCurdy had died and that murder charges had been filed against her, she decided of her own accord to come back here to answer those charges and prove her innocence. Thank you, Miss Norman. Your witness. Mr. Connors. How long have you been a resident of Kansas City? About two years. Have you in that time had any correspondence with the defendant? We've exchanged Christmas cards. Is that all? Yes. Yet she came directly to you after she had killed, after McCurdy's death. Yes. Why? She knew I was her friend. At the time you say you talked to the defendant, was she or was she not a fugitive? A fugitive. Fugitive from what? From slander and cruelty and prejudice, Mr. Pettigrew. Occasioned by what, may I ask? Circumstances over which she had not the slightest control. Her birth. Do I understand you to say, Miss Norman, that the people of the city of Jericho slandered the defendant and were cruel to her? <laughs> I had no idea that Jericho was so vicious and depraved. I do not blame the entire community for the actions of a few. Mm, that's very generous of you, mister. Very generous. Miss Norman, what is your relationship to the chief counsel for the defense, Mr. Connors? Associate counsel. Is that all? 
Never mind answering that, Miss Norman. You're excused. Please, Your Honor, I should like to ask for a recess. For what purpose, Mr. Connors? Your Honor, a very important matter of a personal nature has just come to my attention, which requires immediate settlement. Has the matter any bearing in this case? Yes, Your Honor, I consider it highly prejudicial to the defendant. Very well, Mr. Connors. This court is adjourned till 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you, Your Honor. Get off this place. I want to see Belle. Well, I didn't expect to see you here. Didn't you? Right out in the open, eh? Yes, right out in the open. Where's Belle? She doesn't want to see you. You know that. Belle? Belle? I've got nothing to say to you. Then I'll say what I've got to say right here. I came here to tell you you've got to drop this suit. <laughs> Why? So you can save that cheap little... Belle! You can have the property, Belle, everything. I'm not going to fight you. But you're not going to drag this through the mud, do you understand? Get out of here. I'll do as I please. Listen, Belle, I'm going to tell you something. You and I have lived together a long time. I've always let you have your own way. But this time is different. For once, I'm going to fight back. There's more at stake here than a woman's reputation or any spiteful little revenge on me. You're too ignorant to know it, but you've been talked into doing something that affects a lot of people. If you insist on making this scandal, I promise you it'll be something you'll never forget. And it might interest you and your friend Mrs. Wedge to know that there isn't one word of truth in your accusations. And that on the particular date you mention in your petition, on the night when Mrs. Wedge drove past Julia's house half a dozen times, Julia and I were going over Judge Hutto's papers, and I can prove it by a witness. Now, come on, Belle. Go upstairs and sleep it off. And when you're feeling better, we'll sit down and have a nice long talk. I hate you. I've always hated you. I'm not good enough for you. No. You married me when you had nothing, but when you started up, you became ashamed of me. Well, that's not true, and you know it, and so does your mother. Don't... Belle! Oh, Belle, put that gun away. Don't be a fool. Give me the gun, Belle. Dave! Dave! His hat and coat. Oh, thank you. You may come in now, Miss Norman, for just a moment. say yet. He's a very sick man, Miss Norman. Double shock, a bullet and surgery. He's lost a lot of blood. We just gave him a transfusion.
Julia. Miss Norman. How is he? It just doesn't seem possible. I, I mean, Dave, well, how could it have happened? May I see the doctor in charge of Dave Carnish, please? The only thing to do is to ask for a postponement. You're entitled to one, Margie. And under the circumstances, I feel it's the only thing to do. Besides, it'd really be better for me to withdraw from the case altogether. My very presence might be prejudicial to you. Well, how long a postponement? That depends on Dave's... Mr. Connor's condition. Or at least until some other lawyer can familiarize himself with the facts. Does that mean that Margie will have to go through all this again? I'm afraid so. Oh, no! No, I can't go through it again. I can't go back on that stand. I couldn't bear it. I can't do it. I won't ruin it. Margie. Couldn't you go on alone? If you can, I think we'd all rather get it over with. Be seated. Miss Norman. Yes, Your Honor. Have you any information this morning regarding Mr. Connor's condition? Yes, Your Honor. I have a message here from Dr. Patterson at the hospital. It says, patient's condition unchanged. Respiration and pulse weak. Have ordered second transfusion. Miss Norman, this court will be inclined to entertain a motion for a postponement, if you so desire. Thank you, Your Honor. But the defendant does not wish a delay. You are prepared to proceed alone? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. You may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. But first, may I point out to the court that this case, through circumstances beyond our control, has ceased to be an ordinary murder trial and has become a political contest in which the guilt or innocence of Marjorie Ransom is of secondary importance. Your Honor, I protest this imputation of ulterior motives, and I ask... The word has gone out, Your Honor. Beat Dave Connors. Beat him here, and you won't have to beat him at the polls. I am aware of no such word. Just a moment, Mr. Pettigrew. This is a grave charge, Miss Norman. Are you prepared to produce any evidence that this court has been subjected to undue political pressure? I am, Your Honor. Then, Your Honor, I insist that the jury be dismissed while these fantastic charges... The court will decide if the charges are fantastic, Mr. Pettigrew. Go ahead, Miss Norman. I intend to prove by my next witness that a definite conspiracy did exist for the sole purpose of discrediting David Connors as candidate for the United States Senate. I shall prove further that the injection of this irrelevant issue tends to deprive the defendant of her rights to a fair and impartial trial, as it is inconceivable that it should not react upon and thereby influence the jury. If it please the court, no one can regret more than I do the unfortunate accident that's removed Mr. Connors from this trial. However, I must point out to my learned colleague that a purely domestic quarrel in which Mr. Connors has become involved... Brought about, as I shall prove, if not actually planned, by forces inimical to Mr. Connors' political aspirations. But having no bearing whatsoever upon the matter before us. On the contrary, having great bearing, Your Honor. If the counsel for the defense has proof that the defendant is being deprived of a fair trial, this court wishes to be informed. Call your witness, Miss Norman. But, Your Honor... Take your seat, Mr. Pettigrew. First, Your Honor, may I direct your attention to a peculiar set of circumstances about which even Mr. Pettigrew cannot claim lack of knowledge. I ask you to look at the press table, Your Honor. Why were all these out-of-town newspaper men brought here yesterday? Why was their arrival perfectly timed to coincide with the publication and circulation in this courtroom of a scandalous newspaper story regarding Mr. Connors and myself? Is anyone naive enough to believe they just happened to be here? Or is it possible that the word went out to certain editors that this case might be well worth watching? Your Honor, I object to this wholly gratuitous and unfounded attack upon the press of this state. And I ask that the defense counsel's entire statement be stricken from the records as immaterial, irrelevant, and based upon nothing more sound than vague inferences. I must warn you, Miss Norman, that vague and unsubstantiated deductions will not be acceptable to this court. 
if you have evidence that your client is being denied a fair and impartial trial, you may proceed. Otherwise, I shall have to accept the prosecution's objections and order all such immateriality stricken from the record. Mrs. Tucker Wedge. Mrs. Tucker Wedge. Your name? Mrs. Tucker Wedge. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear the evidence you're about to give in the case pending is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God? I do. Take the stand. Mrs. Wedge, you're acquainted with uh, Mrs. Bell Connors, the wife of David Connors. Don't answer that. I object, Your Honor. What has Mrs. Wedge's acquaintance with Mrs. Connors to do with the murder of Gotch McCurdy? I withdraw that. When did you last see Mrs. Connors? Objection! Oh, oh, really, Mr. Pettigrew, I, I have no objection to answering. I have only the slightest acquaintance with Mrs. Connors. As a matter of fact, she's never even been in my home. And you've never been in hers? Well, yes, I have been to her house. I remember my husband took me there once. Oh, several years ago, just after we were married. Did you see her yesterday? Don't answer that. Your Honor, I must ask that counsel for the defense be directed to discontinue this entire line of questioning. Mrs. Wedge is not on trial here. Counsel may continue. But confine her questions to the issue. Yes, Your Honor. When did you last see Mrs. Connors? Did you see her yesterday? Yes, I at did. At your home? No. Where did you see her? Well, really, I failed was to see... Was it at her home? Yes, it was. Who but... was there? Well, I really don't remember. Oh, her mother. No one else? Not that I recall. Wasn't David Connors there? He came in later. Then you were present when he was shot. Your Honor, I again object to this line of questioning. And I repeat, Mrs. Wedge is not on trial here. I withdraw the question, Your Honor. Tell us why you were at Mrs. Connor's house, Mrs. Wedge. Why, I said... You were just calling on her, is that it? Yes. Yet you have just testified that you and Mrs. Connors were not intimate friends. That you hadn't been in her house for years. I didn't say that. I said... Well, besides, I, I have a perfect right to call on anyone I please. But you were there, Mrs. Wedge. Yes, I was there. Now tell us, isn't it true that you encouraged Mrs. Connors to file divorce proceedings against her husband? Don't answer that. Don't and answer And that you persuaded her to file that suit just before the end of this trial, regardless of what the effect might be on Marjorie Ransom. I insist that the witness be not permitted to answer that, Your Honor, and that the jury be instructed to disregard this entire testimony, which has no bearing on the case whatsoever. If Miss Norman wishes to defend her own reputation, let her go and do so elsewhere. You needn't answer that question, Mrs. Wedge. Nor, Miss Norman, will you continue this line of interrogation? If the defense wishes to make this subject the basis of a motion for a new trial, we will proceed without the presence of the jury. In the meanwhile, members of the jury are instructed to disregard the testimony of the witness. The defense does not wish to offer such a motion, Your Honor. Witness is excused. Your Honor, as concluding witness for the defense, I should like to return to the stand myself for the purpose of answering the last question which was put to me yesterday by the prosecuting attorney, and at which time I was not permitted to answer. Very well, Miss Norman. Mr. Reporter, read the concluding questions of the last session. Question, Miss Norman, what is your relationship to the chief counsel for the defense, Mr. Connors? Answer, associate counsel. Question. Is that all? Never mind answering that, Miss Norman. You're excused. My answer to that question, gentlemen, is that it is true that I am and have been in love with David Connors. I think I began to love him as a child. It was this love of him that caused me to return to Jericho to practice law in order that I might be near him. Later, Mr. Connors came to love me. 
but that there has been anything reprehensible in our relationship. That we have ever, at any time, done anything to spoil it. That we are guilty in the slightest degree of the conduct described on the front pages of the papers. I deny just as forcibly as I confess my love for him. From the day we acknowledged our love, we both regarded it as hopeless. That is why I went away from Jericho. And that is why, with one exception, I never saw Mr. Connors. From the day I left here until he came to my apartment in Kansas City to bring Margie Ransom back here for trial. Are there any further questions, Mr. Pettigrew? No questions. Your Honor, whether I would have answered Mr. Pettigrew's question yesterday, as I have today, I don't know. My first reaction to his question was that of any woman. I was angry. I was bewildered. I was ashamed. My first impulse was to run away, just as Marjorie Ransom ran away when she faced the slander and gossip of this town. However, events have transpired since which have served to change my mind. I've come to realize that the only way to rid this case of the false and irrelevant issue regarding Mr. Connors and myself is to face it openly and frankly. Now that I have done this, I ask you to instruct members of the jury to forget us and to consider only that evidence which relates to the guilt or innocence of Marjorie Ransom. I ask that in your charge, you remind the jury that Marjorie Ransom was a voluntary and competent witness in her own behalf. That the state's own witnesses have repeatedly testified under cross-examination as to the unsavory character of Rufus McCurdy. That they be instructed to take into full account the facts which caused Marjorie to run away from Jericho in the first place. If they will confine themselves to those facts, they will realize and so conclude that it is inconceivable that such a child could have intentionally killed anyone. That it is inconceivable that she could strike even the lowest of animals, much less a human being. Except in self-defense. That is the plea that I know Mr. Connors would make if he were able to be here today. Defense rests. All right, Mr. Pettigrew, we'll proceed. One, one, one. Who's speaking, please? Oh, Miss Ella, this is Tucker Wedge. Can you tell me how Mr. Connors is now? I see. Well, if there's any change, Miss Ella, I, I wonder if you'd let me know. Thank you. Well, don't look at me like that. I'm not a criminal. Tucker, surely you don't think that I plan to have Dave shot. Why didn't you tell me you were there? Well, it never really occurred to me. Oh, yes, it did occur to you. You were afraid to tell me, weren't you? Well, if that's the attitude you're You going deliberately to... ruined the only real friendship I ever had. Well, I shouldn't worry too much about it if I were you. At least Dave's problem has been simplified. He isn't Julius. Now that he has a sword to hold over Bell's head. Provided, of course, he lives. Well, whatever happened, surely you realize that what I did, I did for you. For me. For yourself, you mean. It was you who wanted to go to Washington to make a big splash. You never did like this town, not from the first. You hated it. It was too little and narrow and small town for you. That's why you used me to get away, wasn't it? Yes, that's true. I did hate it. And I always will hate it. Well, I'm sorry to hear you say that, Algeria, because I'm afraid it isn't going to do you any good. Whether you hate it or not, from now on, you're going to live here and make the best of it. 
Where are you going? I'm a newspaper man. Remember? I'm going down to my office to make an announcement for the evening paper. I've just decided not to run for the Senate after all. David, 